So, the whole quantum of 18th century will be first impacted by the Treaty of Westphalia. And this Treaty of Westphalia is going to have a very long impact. This will be responsible for the creation of alliances. Creation of alliances in Europe. Okay, why? Because Britain and Prussia, these two became the Protestant one. If we see the case of France, France was a Catholic country. So, this religious division, which became an important part of the 18th century, okay, the beginning of that can be seen only from the Westphalia. So, always remember that the whole equation of the 18th century will be changed by the peace of Westphalia. This is the first thing which you have to remember. If a question comes on what were the factors responsible for the rise of enlightenment in 18th century. So, there you have to remember one thing, this was one of the seminal factor. Along with this, we had other factors like the beginning of scientific revolution. We also see some other factors, we will discuss about it later. But this is one of the factor and this factor was very important. Similarly, the one more thing which we have to understand that time and again, there used to be change in the dynasties. Like similar kind of issue came, like in, when we talk about modern India, we see these those three Carnatic war and the first Carnatic war was fought over the issue of the Austrian war of succession, that there was a succession which was coming in the Austrian dynasty and this again created the fault lines in the, in the Europe. In 18th century, early in 1740s, this became one more major issue and this was going to eventually lead towards one of the most important war okay from the european as well as american point of view and that is known as seven years war from 1756 till 1763 okay so that that's how we have to understand that europe since europe was going towards modernization the 18th century also is linked to the beginning of industrialization mostly in britain so along with industrialization along with changes in the ideas 18th century was going to change the whole world and this is what we have to understand. The Austrian war of succession came to an end with the treaty of aix la chapelle in 1748 and later on eventually we see the seven years war and in this seven year war like I have already told you the alliance formation was like Britain and Prussia versus the rest. So, seven year war became very prominent and in this eventually what we can see that in this also a major impact would not only be on Europe but also on the history of America. Like the colonial empire of France will get liquidated in America and as a result of this we also see the beginning of the American war of independence. The conflict is going to start which which eventually lead to that part. This is also important for all of you to understand Holy Roman Empire. Okay, This boundary that we see, all right. why do we have to remember it? Because this Holy Roman Empire mostly is in which area? In the area of Germany. And this is going to get impacted from the 18th century onward. And this dissolution of this Holy Roman Empire, which will be announced by Napoleon, eventually will help in the unification of Germany. So, please remember Holy Roman Empire was nothing but the area mostly including of the Germans. And here the most influential area was that of Austria. Austria naturally was considered as the head of the German people, but the problem with Austria was twofold. One, yes, it was having German people, but it did not just want to limit its influence only towards the Germany. It wanted to have control over the eastern part of Europe and that is why this Habsburg dynasty was always in problems. And this is what we need to understand later on, because once we understand the profile of all these countries, all the events will become easy for all of you. So, wo koshish karte hai, ek bar se ki. Okay? so these are the seminal events which will affect the overall politics of 18th century in Europe. Now, we will go for country wise profile because hume, dekho, yaad nahi hota. Ek dam se we go for American war of independence, King George III, Kohan tha bhai King George III, kahan se aaya, kyun aaya? We are not able to understand. That is why I want all of you to remember a little bit extra 
this is not going to be very important in exam but from the point of view of creating connections this is going to be very useful okay so let us see what happens in britain in 18th century only from the point of view of monarchy what is the profile we are going to share this ppt with all of you isko revision karke baad mein aaram se apne paas rakh lena final exam mein revision karke jane ki zarurat nahi hai kaam nahi aayega pehle hi samjha deta hu but understanding mein bahut help hogi what was happening in britain so what is the name of the dynasty hanoverian dynasty this is the dynasty which was ruling in britain in 18th century it began with this family taking over the throne aur naam bhi bade aasan hai george 1 george 2 george 3 kitna acha hai na continuation no problem so these were the kind of titles which were taken so george 1 became king in 1714 after the death of any and then his son george 2 succeeded him in 1727 we are talking about early 18th century then along with this we must have used this word wigs you know wig wig party etc so what were these wigs and cabinet system all about so we have to also remember that england was largely governed by a group of influential politician in 1688 we were having glorious revolution and after 1688 england was more or less being ruled by constitutional monarchy so that government which was coming in power that eventually took the name of wigs and this cabinet system continued along with them and one very influential person among them was robert welpul okay so he was often regarded the first unofficial prime minister why are we understanding this when montesquieu will come montesquieu will say the monarchy of britain is better than the absolute monarchy of france so if you have to write only one single point to so kiska naam likhoge kaun thi monarchy mein at least we should have that connection so there you will remember which dynasty was ruling there you remember who was the most prominent personality etc and who was the king at that point of time so these snippets are going to be important in american war of independence they are going to be important when you compare it with the french monarchy so that's why like similarly in france we have which dynasty Bourbon dynasty is going to be there, so that comparison becomes very good. Next wars, what are the important wars which Britain found itself in? The Austrian War of Succession, ये छोड़ दो, जनकीन ईयर वर नॉट दैट मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट, and also Seven Year War. These two are the most important war which are going to be become prominent, and they had significant consequences for British colony as well as global politics, which we'll see in the later classes how is they are going to pan out. Then comes. George III's reign. Remember his name. It is very, very important. Okay. In 1760, he became the king, and he ruled till 1820. It makes our life easy. कि एक ही नाम याद रखना है. ठीक है. For this whole part. And why he is important? Because when American War of Independence is going to happen, they send a plea to King George III that please remove these taxes. But the king did not listen. and last year upsc asked the question that do you think lack of statesmanship in usa was or in england was responsible for the american war of independence and when we talk about statesmanship monarchy as well as prime minister both of them they were responsible so can we easily remember the name of george iii okay these names become important look for writing good answer you should have a little bit of interconnection and this is going to create connection for you what was happening in britain i hope this much is clear to all of you and use this information whenever we need to write an answer finally if you see that he was someone who was trying to increase his personal authority okay and this is why george 3 was a little bit of tyrant also and when we see from the perspective of colonies he was not that much kind and it is during his rule eventually even india will get affected okay it is he who is in power the regulating act is coming then eventually the pitts india act all those acts they came during the reign of george 3 so even in your modern india you can remember this connected to this okay but who was the monarch so in britain if we see during the reign of george 3 the prime minister included lord boot and all of us know about lord north na no? lord north t policy that is something which is important in american war of independence george iii pursued a strategy of dividing the wigs and cultivating his own allies for position of power in fact he was having very close relationship 
with the British East India Company. They they used to give him loan. He used to give them charter. एक हाथ ले एक हाथ दे. ठीक है. So that is what was used to happen with King George III. Then American War of Independence. That is something which is important during his time. Even William Pitt. William Pitt is important for two reason. Number one, he was responsible for overhauling the governance of India by Pitt's India Act of 1784, and he is also important because he was the one during the time, and he is going to play an important role in tackling the challenge of Napoleon. Okay, so Pitt's William Pitt the younger. Okay, बाप बेटा थे पहले William Pitt the elder, then comes the William Pitt the younger, and eventually we have the industrial and agrarian revolution because 18th century europe its history will always be incomplete without mentioning about industrial revolution this is again a separate topic we'll take it later on so we have just trying to see ki what was happening in britain which events are connected with the britain history of 18th century so these are the various events try to remember them next very very important Britain and France. So rivalry. Why rivalry was there with France? Because of the interest. Like we see in the case of India also, we have Carnatic War, and eventually France was defeated. Same see in the case of America. In the America again, this for the Seven Year War, it led to the liquidation of the Empire of France. In Latin America, it was more about Spain versus Portugal. They also created a kind of treaty, and both were happy. You take Brazil, and I'll take the. rest of the territories if we see even towards the other parts of the world these two were fighting against each other all the time like we see the case of indo china so this whole of indo china that we see in myanmar britain was able to control it and if we see vietnam vietnam came under the control of france thailand became a neutral country nobody is going to occupy it ki idhar se hum idhar se that's how the colonial rivalry became very very important So the 18th century progress, they both of became bitter rivals. It continued and intensified during the 19th century. Both had vast overseas empire, and they kept on fighting for America, Caribbean, India, as well as later on Africa. Africa was the last one. Reason being, Africa was affected by various kinds of diseases, and that's why it was known as white man's grief. and that's and in the end of the 19th century only africa will be controlled by the european powers but here also the britain and france will fight for the strategic kind of area like britain will always think about egypt at the top and south africa at the bottom reason being both are going to play important role in going towards india so india was the jewel in the crown and that's why you have to remember britain and france always fought for that the whole case of india i hope you already know so i need not explain it Finally comes the Seven Year War. So this was the global conflict. In fact, it is considered as the first major war in the history of the world, because majority of the powers they were fighting for each other. It was the commercial dispute, religious dispute, all of them they came together, and Britain and France were the primary adversary. And eventually, we see the creation of an alliance. And in this, as Britain won, it eventually led to the signing of Treaty of Paris in 1763. which led to certain provisions okay so france is something you have to we have to understand even more but britain ka profile samajh mein aa gaya what britain is doing in its internal politics which are the major events of 18th century and finally who are in power in england just remember this much and that is going to be very very helpful later on if we see the profile of france so france it was ruled by bourbon dynasty So when we see the Bourbon dynasty, there are specific rulers: King Louis fourteen, fifteen, and the last one was sixteen. Okay, at the time of revolution, he was the king. So when we talk about King Louis fourteen, King Louis fourteen, he was born in sixteen thirty-eight. Okay, became a king at the age, tender age of five, in sixteen forty-three, and ruled till seventeen fifteen, seventy-two years. He was the king of France. and he was a complete tyrant he used to come up with the idea that i am the state whatever i am saying is going to become the law of the state so nobody is required to say anything in this regard all right so that's why king louis 14 is always regarded as a person who did not allow the ideas of the enlightenment phase to even become part of the 
France. And this will be one of the reason why revolution will happen in France. We had seen enlightened despot in the case of Austria, in the case of even Prussia as well as Prussia. But here we do not see any semblance of enlightened despotism. And these are the people like he marked the France ascendancy as a military, diplomatic and cultural power. And what did he do? He did a lot of centralization of power. This you have to remember because this theme is again going to become very important when we discuss about French revolution. So what did he do? He did take two specific steps. The first step was he took away the duties of feudal lords. Okay, So their duties were taken away only they were left with privileges. Again, a significant kind of thing which will create problem later on. And second, he ensures that nobility becomes dependent upon him. So, this famous palace of Versailles, it is going to have roughly 20,000 people. Out of 20,000, 2k or 2,000 would be nobles. And they will always be fighting against each other so that they can get maximum kind of, you can say, concession from the side of King Louis XIV. So, nobility became completely dependent upon king. And the feudal lords in the France, their duties were taken away. What kind of duties were they holding? Like ensuring law and order in their country, collection of taxes, etc, etc. So many of these duties were taken away and this was bound to have a very big impact later on. All right. So please remember King Louis XIV was the one, he was the most powerful king of France. He also did an important reform because France was always like they were not having very good concept of budget. Budget word itself comes from France. Okay. So, fiscal reforms were done by Colbert. Colbert was one of the personality. He was also responsible for the creation of French East India Company. Okay? So, remember his name, Colbert. So, he appointed John Baptiste Colbert as controller General of Finances and eventually he come up with certain financial reforms. So, always remember that certain financial reforms were done, but in the long run, they were not that much, you can say, useful. With initial trouble, he even brought in net surplus era, but wars, wars is something which defined the time of King Louis XIV. And since this war were being fought on various, uh, you can say, intervals like Franco-Dutch war, war of League of Augsburg, war of Spanish succession along with two lesser conflicts, so this warfare remained the main theme of the era of King Louis XIV. And France will always follow this tradition. Kabhi bahari nahi aana war ke usse. Okay? Finally comes the costly lifestyle and administration. As I have already told you, in the palace of Versailles, there used to be 20,000 people. Khidmat mein hi lage hume, subhai se leke shaham, ta kaam kab karoge? Okay, so that was the problem that we see and even the tax collection methods were very costly in nature. They had a system of tax contractors. Okay, like we have a system of revenue farming or ijaadara system. System is the Versailles ko system France ne bhi bana rakha tha. And it was not an efficient system. That's why there were lots of leakages in the tax collection and because of these factors, France at least on the fiscal front, it kept on suffering. After him came King Louis XV. King Louis XV was even more kind of extravagant person. Okay, Before his death, he said there is going to a revolution is going to come. So, the next person said that he is very big. He told me to This happened during the reign of King Louis XV, again a monarch. Uh, he, when he reached his maturity in 1723, his kingdom was ruled by Philippe Orleans and later on even this Orleans remained the regent of France because he came to the throne at a very young age. Some economic reforms again were done, foreign policy it remained mostly inconsistent in nature and time and again the system of fighting against each other it continued like during his reign we see the fighting of Austrian war of succession and then comes the seven year war and they were fought during the time of King Louis XV. In 1774, he died and eventually King Louis XVI came to power and this King Louis XVI was not having a character like either 14 or 15. Okay, He was a person not much interested in 
ruling the people or serving the state okay there was one minister he was resigning so he he went to him and said i envy you because you can resign and i cannot this was the kind of king that king louis 16 was he was very much interested in art he was very much interested in hunting these were the two hobbies he was having and unhone bhi upsc ka def dekh liya hoga ki baad mein kabhi question aayega hobbies pe anyway so he was not interested in the affairs of the state at the same time one big problem for him was he was married to mary antoinette mary antoinette became the queen and she was linked to austria and when the whole affairs of the france got entangled with austria eventually this will be responsible why monarchy is going to decline in france and she was someone who was always extravagant in nature she was given a very famous pet name madam deficit we say fiscal deficit she was known as madam deficit because she used to do a lot of extravagance like even there is a very famous episode during the french revolution and when when she asked one of her servant that why are people crying for bread you know so she said they can eat cake also aisa kya hai bhai bread mein kya dikkat hai in log so she was someone who was not associated with the ground reality and this was something which was going to become very prominent in the case of france a theme is there why revolution happen in france so we have seen some of the reasons like number 1 there was no enlightened despotism the economic reforms they are not that much sustainable in nature and a ruler has come to power who is not that much interested in the affairs of the state all these factors are going to snowball in the next 20 years and it is going to lead to beginning of revolution so this is the profile that we have of france okay so seven years impact that we see many of the territories of the france they were taken away like canada etc they were taken away as a result of this seven years war then taxation and fiscal policy loss of overseas territory this is what was going to affect france and always there was a kind of rivalry between britain and france if somebody is fighting against someone let us become part of the alliance and this was a kind of problem which we see throughout the 18th century third comes russia whenever we talk about 18th century we have to discuss about britain we have to discuss about france and the third one would be always russia Russia was a powerful state okay it was a very powerful state and here the ruler was Catherine Catherine II Catherine II was given the title of Catherine the Great and remember the name of the dynasty the name of the dynasty is Romanov it was the house of Romanov later on this is going to continue from the maternal side until the Russian revolution or or the first Russian revolution that we say feb revolution where we see the abdication of throne by the tsar you know tsar was the title which was taken by them and the name of the dynasty was romanov okay you have to remember all of this so catherine second she was somebody who was also considered as a part of enlightened despot some of the domestic policy that we see that yes she enjoyed the company of learned individual confiscated the land of church and uses for the promotion of education she emphasized on westernization of russia so certain reforms were going on in the place of russia okay if you see foreign policy so this is what we see the beginning of eastern question when we talk about eastern question it is about turkey so turkey was someone which was was ruled by the ottomans so since 13th century the ottomans were creating their empire they had reached their zenith by 16th and 17th century and right? all of us say they have the contemporary of the mughals and by the early 18th century the turkey was on the decline we'll see we'll discuss about turkey also or ottoman also so when we see the foreign policy there was a war with turkey russia was trying to increase its influence towards the east and for that purpose it has to defeat only one empire and it was ottomans okay there's a very f- famous phrase known as the sikman the sikman is the phrase which is used with the ottomans tsar alexander used this word for the first time that the sikman is dying and we should divide the inheritance okay so because they were trying to take the territories of ottoman empire ottoman empire was something which was in three continents africa asia as well as europe so it was a very far flung empire 
and such far flung empire having different kinds of people under its control they are not going to sustain forever and this weakness was easily taken into consideration by russia and russia realized ki i can take some steps so they defeated the turks and forced them to equate moldavia and wallachia this is the roughly area of eastern part of europe it ended with the famous treaty of kuchuk kinarji in 1774 russia gained control over northern shore of black sea and sea of azov black sea was open to russian navigation independence of crimea so this is the time from where the crimea remains an important part of russia it was given to ukraine but as all of us see 2014 again it was taken away by russia the reason being crimea offers access to black sea the black sea is very important for the trade and commerce of russia because the northern sea it is completely frozen in the winter okay so this is what is important so russia was granted the right to protect the greek christian subjects of turkey okay this is going to be the fundamental cause of the war in crimea crimean war from 1853 to 56 so it's retraced all the way up to here when initially turkey was defeated by russia they said now the orthodox christians who will be protect them russians themselves crimean war will be fought over this only there were religious differences and it led to the fighting between france versus russia france somebody considered himself as the protector of catholics and russia used to consider itself as the protector of the orthodox christians so this religious rivalry eventually led later on to the crimean war so its initial part starts from here itself because here russia was given the right to protect the greek christian subject please remember i am giving this profile so that whenever a question comes anywhere just after introduction in the background we can link it ki how this played out okay of turkey and interfere in turkey's internal peace between turkey and russia was short lived and war again resumed in 1787 so this kept on continuing one of the major part of the foreign policy of russia it was about the partition of poland poland was a weak country okay and it was not having a very powerful monarchy so time and again poland always remained as a part of the plans of the bigger colonial power so poland was partitioned thrice and she could not uh, if you see from the perspective of catherine the great she could not take all the part of poland because austria and prussia they were standing there so like you can see it was taken by town three times so in 18th century when the french revolution started even at that point of time they were busy in partitioning poland so initially none of these power put took too much influence towards the french revolution because inka kya kaam chal raha tha ki poland ki territory hame raha tha bas theek hai this was going on between these bigger powers so please remember this was also one of the important event the partition of poland okay so this is how we see the cartoon and since it was the catherine so you can see russia constantinople going all the way up to constantinople means eastern question so she was the one who was trying to all the way go to there so that they can increase their influence okay so that's how catherine reigns elevated russia's prestige in europe it was able to defeat turkey it was able to get the spoils in poland it was able to reform its internal administration but overall she did not allow people to have the right kind of freedom freedom was not allowed only certain reforms were introduced and if you are able to do those reforms that's it wahi pe khatam ho gayi kahani so political reforms were not introduced that's why the word is an oxymoron enlightened despot enlightened log despot kaise banenge theek hai so it's an oxymoron so that's why political reforms were not done by these people and in fact through the help of these reforms they kept on consolidating their absolute power and that is one thing which we have to understand along with this okay so next comes the friend turkey itself so when we talk about the ottoman empire ottoman empire was spent through three continents asia europe as well as africa so all the three of them were affected by this you can see okay how the different parts were affected like you say africa is also there arabia little part even europe so this is how three continents were affected by this plus it was facing by 18th century an internal crisis so 18th century is all about how the ottoman empire is on the declining but still it is able to preserve its integrity to somehow and that is what 
the biggest question of 18th century. It is declining. Russia is able to defeat it also. But powers like France, powers like Britain, powers like Austria-Hungary are always coming in the support of Ottomans because they know if this area is taken by Russia, it will lead to the disintegration of the Habsburg dynasty and that will be fatal for Austria. And if this area is taken over by Russia, this will be fatal for the British imperialism. All of us know that Britain was more or less affected by the Russian phobia, even in the case of India also. Okay, like Afghan war was fought in the 19th century, 1838 to 42. Even the annexation of Sindh and later that of the Punjab, all of this was guided by what? Russian phobia. So, this same thing can be seen here also. Turkey was on the verge of decline. It continued to lose its territory one after the other and the biggest expansion was that of Russians. Okay. Efforts were done for modernization by some of the monarchs like Selim III as well as Mahmud II, but they did not succeed in the long run. So, this is how it kept on increasing 15th, 16th century, 17th, 18th. This is how it was. Okay, like in Africa also, in eastern part of Europe also and even some part of Asia. So, this is how this was a very big empire and it was now on the decline and fragmentation was happening time and again. And as I have already told you, the delay in the dissolution was primarily due to inability of great power to reach a consensus on how to divide the Ottoman territories. Eastern territory, they were the soft underbelly of Britain. They never wanted Russia to get in this area because Egypt ke through kaha pahunchenge? India. This is how it is going to be problematic. Okay. So, Turkey and by the end of the world war, eventually majority of its territory would be given independence. Some of them will be under the mandate system also. Okay. Like Iraq, Syria, etc. They will be mandate under League of Nations. You can see the ethnic map. Different types of people. Bulgars are there. Turkish are there. Hurd people are there, Armenians are there, Arabs are there. So, different kinds of nationality were there within the Ottoman Empire. This was one of the major reason. Since we see the rise of nationalism and its, its more potent form after the French Revolution. So, everybody became conscious of the nationality. Like we as Indians became very conscious from the later half of the 19th century. And by 20th century, we also became independent. Same was the case with Ottoman Empire. All these nationalities like Bulgars, Turkish people, Armenians, etc. They were trying to create their own territory, their own nation state. And this was the reason why this was becoming a sick man. The sick man was having suicidal tendencies because all these territory, they belong to different ethnic group and they could not be satisfied within the one only one nation. And that was not going to happen. This was the reason Turkey was bleeding from 18th century onwards. Let us see further. If we see the case of Germany, so Germany was something which was having more than 350 states, more than 350 states were there in Germany. Okay. Then the Holy Roman Empire, so Germany was loosely united under the Holy Roman Empire, which encompassed not only German state but also territories in Central Europe. So some other communities are also part of this. And who used to dominate it? Austria. This is one thing which we have to remember. Austria used to dominate Germany and as a result of this, the unification of Germany had to wait a lot because Austria's interest was divided. Even though it was half German, it was also having other empire under its control. So, under whose name can it create a German nation? So, this was the biggest problem. This was also identified by Bismarck later on. Bismarck used to say that they have so many nationality, how can we German identify ourselves with Austrians? It cannot happen. And that's why Prussia took the leadership and eventually it led to the unification of Germany later on. You have to remember this, that Holy Roman Empire was there. This Holy Roman Empire will be closed down by Napoleon. But this will be again revived by Austria later on. Because Austria is the one which is dominating it. Tensions were increasing in 18th century between Austria and Prussia. They were, tensions were increasing and the rivalry was not only about German politics but also implication of European geopolitics because it was a Protestant country and this always used to align itself with England. And that's why the whole equation used to change one after the other. This Holy Roman Empire 
which was mostly presided over by Austria was not that much dominant. If you see from the point of view of polity, yes, it was having influence, but it was not that much effective. This was the status of Germany that we have. If we see Prussia, Prussia was under the fine leadership of Frederick the Great. All of us know he was an enlightened despot, okay, but not in each and every aspect of life, and we'll see that also. So Frederick the Great, also known as Frederick II, he reigned from 1742 to 1786, so rule of roughly 46 years. And during this time, we see Austrian War of Succession, then we see the, even the Seven Years' War. So he played an important role. He played an important role in increasing the prestige of Prussia. And he, he in fact brought Prussia equal to Austria after the Seven Year War. So Seven Year War is also an important chapter in the process of unification of Germany. Previously, Austria used to dominate it, but once Prussia and Britain won, this gave a same kind of status to both Prussia and Austria. This self-confidence will be carried forward by Prussia later on and when leaders like Bismarck, they will come in power, it will lead to their unification. So please remember, seven year war is also important from the perspective of German unification. The entanglement which happened was now beneficial to Prussia. They also participated in the partition of Poland. So Poland is something which was more like kindergarten. This kept on happening and this is how the Prussia was trying to increase its influence in the part of Germany. Okay. Then expansion also happened with the period of time. We don't have to remember because there are so many states in Germany. Hanover, Bavaria, etc. From exam point of view, or topic to Okay. This is the empire which will be eventually created. Even though Prussia was later was limited to the northern part, but later on this has also be, become a part of this in 1871. So if we see his foreign policy, when we say he was an enlightened despot, not in foreign affairs. See his motto. Take what you can, you are never wrong unless you are obliged to give back. This is something. So that's why his foreign policy was very much criticized by everybody. Okay. Then his relentless pursuit of the British Prussia led to the conquest of Silesia and other action, pursued policy of religious solution and economic development. So in 2014, when UPSC asked this question, the enlightened despots were not politically liberal. So we can easily see the manner in which they are partitioning. Poland, the manner in which the unscrupulous foreign policy is there. And I am completely sure, majority of you would know nothing about it. These points are very, very important. Like majority of us do not study ki how seven year war also plays an important role in the unification of Germany. Because Prussia and Austria became equal. So seven year war played an important role in that. Later on, if you see, comes Frederick William II. He was the one who was in power when French Revolution started. He was not that much powerful like Frederick the Great. And that's why later on, again, Austria became dominant. Okay. Then we see Austria-Hungary. So if we see the case of Austria-Hungary, initially the most famous ruler was Maria Theresa. And then eventually comes his son, that was Joseph II. So these two are the important personality. She lost Silesia to Prussia. This was the area which was gained by Frederick the Great. She tried her level best, but it remained with Prussia later on. Joseph II is also considered as an enlightened despot. He also did a lot of changes, abolished differences in race, language and religion. What he did, he tried to create a pan Habsburg kind of identity. That we are not Germans, we are not Austrian, we are not of this and that. We are Habsburg. So that kind of logic were brought in by him. Certain reforms were also done for the same. But all of them, they failed before his death itself. Okay? So all these, these reforms included centralized governance, uniform language, judicial reforms, education, abolition of nobility, privileges. Many reforms were being done by him. But the biggest challenges were, even though they were well-intentioned, they were out of sync with the sentiments and tradition of the people. So this is again a limitation which we see with the enlightened despot. But they do not say that it is a democracy. Okay. Or if the, if the will of the people is not going to be accepted, it's not going to last for long. Like if you see an example from modern India, 
like those former bills those bills even if they were well intentioned they were not acceptable to the farmers so do you think that they are going to become successful no same thing can be seen even here he tried to create a homogeneous austrian nation through force which eventually failed and the challenges to joseph ii's rule the polyglot nature of the empire polyglot means different types of nationalities were part of it that's why we say polyglot nature of austrian empire eventually faced various challenges as a result of this and austria hungary was divided uh, between its concern over french revolution and worries about russia and prussia's activity in poland on the eve of french revolution and eventually it will be the announcement which will come from the side of austria which will create the first coalition during the time of french revolution okay duke of brunswick like when you talk about mary antoinette she was linked to austria and since she was linked to austria even the king tried to fly, fly or all of us know about the flight of varennes sasural jane ki koshish kar rahe the when the france was going through revolution the king was caught and eventually later on when jacobians came to power and kya dikkat thi sasural hi to ja raha tha bechara but they thought that ki nahi nahi aise kaise ja rahe ho bina hame bina bataye chale gaye so anyway so they were caught they were considered as traitors and later on in 1793 the king of france was executed and this is how austria hungary is also going to play an important role when the french revolution is going to begin okay remember the dynamics of these various dynasties once we understand the dynamics padhna samajhna bahut aasan ho jayega ye to agar hum directly start kar de with enlightenment it becomes relatively ki connection nahi hai dimag mein kahin bhi kuch bhi likhna shuru kar dete hain fir hum if we go towards italy all of us understand that italy it was a geographical expression this is the famous quote of metternich okay and in 18th century there was only one specific area which was italian in character and that was piedmont and sardinia the house of savoy that was the only one which was in power all right and there was dominance of austria lombardy venetia it was under the direct control of austria even umbria marches here the princes they came or the princess they came from Austria so Austria was having a very big control in the case of Italy and this became one of the biggest hindrances even though there were different there of duchies like Milan Parma Modena Lucca these are the various duchies and but majority of them they were controlled by Austria okay so in 18th century when we talk about Italy the map of Italy was like this the map of Italy was like this where we have the piedmont and sardinia these are the two places okay and eventually all of this venice lombardy etc all of this was under the different controls the middle part was under the control of pope or papal see okay and the south part naples and sicily so naples and sicily was under the control of bourbon dynasty so that's how italy was completely divided and the biggest roadblock in the case of italy it was coming from austria okay so italy was also very divided so when we see 18th century these are the major powers that we have to see when napoleon will be able to defeat the italian king in 1796 97 this is a very famous campaign he simplified the map of italy and it eventually became king north italy middle italy and south italy it was divided into three parts and this was a simplification but eventually what happened at the vienna congress the map was again changed to this one and this was the on the basis of principle of legitimacy those who are the legitimate sovereign they should be restored okay so this is something which we have to remember if we see from the point of view of italy there was only one house it was the, the house of savoy but unless this house of savoy becomes powerful overnight there was not much chances that unification was going to happen like if we see the german thing or the german identity prussia and austria both were powerful with the efforts of frederick the great prussia got the same status like that of austria also but if you see the case of italy it was only having this house of savoy this house of savoy was also relatively very weak okay so in italy there were two approaches for unification please remember them when we will discuss italian unification you have to remember this two approaches were there 
initially italians used to think that they can go alone they can unify themselves okay it was possible in the case of germany because the both the powers were very prominent and powerful in nature but if we see italy italy will not be able to go alone they did not know it and this initial phase from 1815 to 1848 this is the phase when they thought the house of savoy thought that we can go alone but when they will be defeated in the battles of castoja and novara in 1848 they realized we cannot go alone we require international help for our unification so the whole process of unification known as risorgimento this whole process is known as risorgimento the italian resurgence and this italian resurgence is going to become very very important only after 1848 and they will take the help of france they will take the help of russia and that's how italy will later be unified we have to remember all these profiles because it will become very easy to understand okay, what will happen in vienna what were the challenges faced by these various uh, powers later on this was italy eventually the most important part which we have to remember is the seven years war seven years war is very very important from the point of view of the whole politics okay kindly see it from, uh, along with the slide that seven year unfolded as a global conflict uh, embroiling all major powers spanning continents like we can see that this war was fought in europe in america even in india the famous battle of vendivosh in which eventually the french got defeated so this was fought everywhere in fact in some books uh, some books from european perspective they call it as the first world war it was not having the intensity of the 1914 world war but at least in geographical scale that since it is being fought in different continents they often say this was the first world war ab dekho historians aadhe log to pagal hote hain koi kuch bhi karta rehta hum log beech mein phas gaye hain but anyway we have to remember likh number dena ja ke bas samjhane ke liye bata raha hu ki by this thus if we see the geographical scale if some war is being fought on three continent That's good enough because Antarctica पे जाकर तो वैसे भी वॉर नहीं कर पाओगे वो यही है मेन ठीक है ना वी हैव एशिया देन वी हैव यूरोप एंड देन वी हैव द अमेरिका दीज आर द मेजर कॉन्टिनेंट दैट वी हैव सो दैट्स वाई दिस वॉज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉर प्रोट्रेक्टिव वॉर बिकॉज इट वॉज हैविंग वेरियस काइंड ऑफ अलायंसिस द सीड वर सोन बाय द इंटेंस कमर्शियल एंड इम्पील रेवलरी बिटवीन ब्रिटेन एंड फ्रांस विच सर्व एज अ कैटलिस्ट फॉर दिस एंड दिस वॉज कंपाउंडेड बाय द टेंशन विच वी कैन सी बिटवीन प्रूशिया who aligned with britain and austria aligned with france which further fueled the flames of war so this is going to become very very important concurrently other conflicts like french and indian war carnatic wars anglo spanish war were intervened contributing to complex and interconnected web of hostilities upsc can even ask a question on seven years war okay, what was this war all about what was its major impact so we have to remember and the formation eventually as the war unfolded the alliances took shape with one camp including britain and france and hanover hanover is a small territory from germany while the opposing faction were composed in france austria sweden saxony russia and even eventually spain but all of them they got defeated russia france and austria who were rivals they became an alliance this was something which was unexpected and this diplomatic revolution reshaped the traditional alliances of europe and finally it was going to have a lot of repercussions and what were those repercussions like if you see euro saw limited lateral adjust adjustment colonial front witness substantial changes like if you see france it lost its american war france ceded multiple territory like north america canada caribbean parts of india to the great britain spain was compelled to relinquish florida to great britain and the war contributed to the eventual emergence of united states as an independent nation all of us know this because after the seven year war the conflict is going to increase between the britain and the colonies which will eventually lead to american war of independence so this is the overall view of 18th century which we have to remember and this will come to an end with the treaty of paris this treaty of paris will be eventually signed in 1763 so you have to remember date agar exact yaad kar sakte ho to bahut hai nahi to aise bhi bahut hai hamare liye in the in 1763 the redistribution of foreign territory has far reaching consequences for the balance of power both in north america as well as the caribbean so if we see the overall 18th century let me summarize it for you in the 18th century we have certain powers okay 
if you see from the perspective of Britain, Britain's perspective is like this, it is having a constitutional monarchy, already reforms have happened in the case of Britain. Britain wants to keep control over its colonial empire, okay? And at the same time, since industrial revolution is starting here, it requires more and more colonies. This is what the important part of Britain. Britain was having the finest navy and since it was having the finest navy, eventually it became the biggest colonial power. So, Britain we have to remember, in general Britain is not going to become part of the European conflict unless its own interest is going to get jeopardized. In general, it will always follow the policy of golden isolation, stay away from Europe, continental Europe. It will also be interested in its own interest and isko hamesha dhyan rakhna hai. This is one of the reason why Britain was able to win in India also. Its only focus was towards the colonies. Its focus was not towards continental Europe. It will always become a part of the alliance only when its interests were getting jeopardized. That is the only reason you have to remember about Britain. And as we have already seen, George III, for majority of the important events, he was in power. If we see from the perspective of France, and if we see the part of Britain, Britain was already a constitutional monarchy from 1688 onwards, the glorious revolution. The only equation which will change in case of Britain is after 1763, because Britain paid a lot for the war, the seven year war. Now they wanted the colonies to pay for their own security and this was going to change the overall politics in the Americas. Then we see about France, in France there was no concept of enlightened despotism, nothing was there. Fiscal mismanagement, it was again a part of France, it was a part of that. And finally, when King Louis XVI, he came to power, okay, King Louis XVI, he was not having that much interest in the affairs of the state and this was going to affect the stature of France. With France was overly dependent upon its king, as we can see from the reforms of King Louis XIV, since he has taken away the duties of even the feudal lords. So, that is why a country which was completely dependent upon its king, who was absolute monarch, but the person who has come to power is not having the capacity to do so. And this will become the single most important reason for the revolution in France. Then after Britain and France, the next power that we have is Austria-Hungary and along with Prussia. Both of them, even though Prussia was mostly purely German, Austria-Hungary was having the Habsburg dynasty. Before the Seven Year War, Austria-Hungary was considered as the natural leader of the Germans. But this equation changed by the Seven Year War. Prussia came equal to Austria-Hungary. Frederick the Great was able to take some of the areas even from Austria-Hungary. And that is why eventually by the end of the 18th century, Prussia became very powerful. And this was bound to change the reality of Germany in the 19th century, when it will be the one which will fight for the unification under the leadership of Bismarck. If we see Russia and Turkey, Russia is becoming a great power under the leadership of Catherine the Great. She introduced a lot of reform, but if we see from the foreign policy point of view, she was too much interested in Poland and Poland was partitioned thrice. But she was not allowed to keep it for herself. She was made to share the spoils with both Prussia as well as Austria-Hungary. So, this triangle always is going to be important. We will see it later on also. These three, this triangle is very, very important. Like when Bismarck is going to fight against Austria-Hungary, the battle of Sadova, Russia will remain neutral. So, this overall equation of these three powers will always be important. It will change the shape of Europe. Turkey, as we have already seen, it has started as an empire, Ottoman empire from the 13th century onwards and by the beginning of the 18th century, it was becoming very feeble in nature and this advantage was tried to be reaped by Russia. But since Russia was the one which was against the colonial interest of both Britain, France as well as Austria, Hungary, these three powers will not allow Turkey to get dismembered. Okay? So, that is why this is often said that that the soul of the sick man of Europe was long gone, but its body was preserved by 
ब्रिटेन फ्रांस एंड ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी देखो ऐसे कहानी ऐसी पोइटिक चीजें अगर लिखनी है ना तो उसके लिए रट्टा मारना पड़ेगा दीज लाइन्स आर वेरी पावरफुल कैन यू गेट द एसेंस ऑफ दिस द सोल ऑफ द सिकमैन ऑफ यूरोप वॉज लॉन्ग ऑन बट इस बॉडी वॉज प्रिजर्व बाय ब्रिटेन फ्रांस एंड ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी वी कैन इजली अंडरस्टैंड इट ओके दिस इज द मीनिंग सो दैट्स वाई द होल ईस्टर्न क्वेश्चन Every year they will try to give you some kind of question very much linked with the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the next, uh, the independence of Serbia, Greek War of Independence, Crimean War of Independence. Later we talk about the uh, the war between Russia and Turkey in 1877, the Treaty of San Stefano, Treaty of Berlin, and later on we'll have the Balkan War. And finally, it was the Eastern question which led to the First World War. So that's why the whole beginning of this question becomes very aggressive from the 18th century onwards. So please remember the equation between these two. If we can remember these many powers, this is the equation. Only very small power, one more is remaining, and that is Italy. Italy cannot, you can say, unify itself. There are two approaches to Italian unification. First, they always used to say that we can go alone. We can do it on ourselves, but This was realized by Kuo that alone we can't do anything. Okay, so that's why he changed the overall politics and he participated in the Crimean War. Through this, he got the support of France and as well as Italy. Okay, this is the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the Eastern question. Eastern question includes all the events starting from the how eastern question because crimean war was fought between britain and france versus russia because russia was trying to increase influence against turkey so even the eastern question affected the affairs of italy isko hamesha dhyan rakhna there is a very famous pyq that eastern question has always been an international question ki yahan ek chhota sa kuch bhi ho jaye sare log aake khade ho jate hain to hum saath milke karenge kuch na kuch alag se why because the interest of these three were very very prominent Britain because of the empire of India, Austria-Hungary because Russia used to consider itself as the leader of Slavs, France because of religion, Catholic versus the Orthodox. So these three were always against Russia, and this was the equation which was going to play out in the 18th century. Okay, आज ये काम करते हैं यहीं पे रुकते हैं. I hope the introduction is clear to all of you. I'm just showing you how. We are going to give you the PPTs, ठीक है ना उनको यूटिलाइज कैसे करना है और जो ये तो टॉपिक इट वॉज मोर अबाउट द ओवर व्यू तो इसमें तो कुछ ज्यादा पी वाई क्यू वगैरह है नहीं दिस इज अबाउट यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्या चीजें थी यूरोप में अब आगे एक बार समझ लेते हैं नेक्स्ट क्लास से हम करेंगे क्या ठीक है लेट मी जस्ट गिव यू अ ब्रीफ पिक्चर सो लाइक इफ आई टेक द टॉपिक ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट सो फर्स्ट विल टॉक अबाउट वट इज द ट्रेंड इन द पी वाई क्यूज ओके दिस यू कैन डू फॉर योर सेल्फ नहीं करना तो मेरे साथ कर लेना दैट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प आउट सो वट इज द क्वेश्चन आर कमिंग ऑन फैक्टर्स और द रोल ऑफ साइंटिफिक रेवोल्यूशन आइडियाज ऑफ इन जनरल वट आर द आइडियाज ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट द स्पेसिफिक रोल ऑफ कांत रूसो विद इन दिस वी हैव रोमेंटिसिज्म द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एज ऑफ एनलाइटन वर्सेज एनलाइटन एज एनलाइटन डेस्पोटिज्म और एज ऑफ रेपेंटेंस दिस इज द थियोरी विच इज गिवन बाय लॉर्ड एक्टेन and finally features and limitations so this is the overall theme which you will find in the pyqs so first i'll tell you thing then i'll tell you the keywords which you have to remember from exam point of view like age of reason man was born free but he is everywhere in chains lord acton says age of repentance can say immature state of ignorance and error so these are the things which you will remember i'm not saying these are something rocket science ye pyq ke basis pe hi banaya gaya hai but you have to make sure there will be only one question and in this one question how you going to fit in all this is the challenge and that's why answer writing should also be reformed along with this samajh aa rahi hai meri baat dekho concepts samjhenge but concepts se bahut zyada important ek point pe ban jata hai answer writing and those topics which are very very important you have to learn all these things there then बैकग्राउंड समझेंगे एक डेफिनेशन रट्टा रट्टा मारेंगे वे यही लिखेंगे हर बार कुछ भी आ जाए यही लिखना है हर बार नई डेफिनेशन याद करोगे तो कहाँ से मतलब बहुत यार इतना दिमाग पे प्रेशर नहीं डालना है एक बार बस याद करेंगे ये 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 जो मन में अच्छा लगता है तीनों में से एक अल्टरनेटिव ले लो 
ठीक है गेट मैरिड टू वन और वही बार बार लिखना है किससे प्यार करते हो इससे खत्म झूठ बोलना है पूरी जिंदगी ठीक है तो एनलाइटनमेंट वॉज अ फिलोसफिकल एंड कल्चरल मोमेंट दैट एम्फोसाइज द पावर ऑफ रीजन एंड द पोटेंशियल फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स टू अचीव नॉलेज विजडम एंड प्रोग्रेस थ्रू रैशनल थिंकिंग बिलीव मी यू कैनॉट राइट दिस ऑन योर ओन फिर तुम लिखोगे उल्टी पुल्टी डेफिनेशन इट वॉज द एज ऑफ रीजन उसके बाद समझ नहीं आएगा इतना ही इंग्लिश ही आता था मुझे तो खत्म हो गया दिस इज द एंड सो दैट्स वाई जहाँ पे इम्प्रेस करना है वहाँ पे देखो पूरा तैयार होके जाना पड़ेगा कि भाई वट इज एनलाइटनमेंट इज ऑल अबाउट सो हेयर कोई भी एक डेफिनेशन जो भी आपको पसंद आती हो उसको नोट डाउन करो उसको फाइनलाइज करो डोंट चेंज योर आंसर एवरी डे यही देखो सेम फिलोसफी काम करती है इंटरव्यू में वाई डू वॉन्ट टू बिकम सेल्फ सेल्फेंट एक ही काम है यही 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 रीजन है मेरा और कुछ है करना ही नहीं मैंने हर बार चेंज करोगे तो फंसा लेंगे क्योंकि हम हर किसी को ऐसा लगता है कि ना कि हम बोल देंगे सोशल सर्विस और वो अरे वाह उनको पता है ऐसे रोज सुबह से लेके शाम तक तुम जैसे लोग मिलते हैं उनको साठ साल के पांच लोग बैठे तीन सौ साल का एक्सपीरियंस है सारी सोशल सर्विस दस मिनट में निकल जाती <laughs> यही बस मैं बता रहा हूँ कि अपने आकाम रिड्यूस करते चलना डोंट मेक इट बिकॉज मैनी स्टूडेंट्स दे कम टू मी इन दी एंड सर आपने क्लास तो सारी करा दी अब इम्पोर्टेंट क्या है तो ये मेरे साथ नहीं होना चाहिए दोबारा क्योंकि आई टेलिंग यू स्पेसिफिकली ये पीपीटी में आपके बेनिफिट के लिए है आपको जो अच्छा लगता है वो रख लीजिए बाकी चीजें से इसको हटा दीजिए बट देर विल बी ओनली वन क्वेश्चन माइंड इट इंट्रोडक्शन के बात करेंगे फिर एक परस्पेक्टिव भी याद करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज इन टेन मार्कर्स इन पेपर टू स्टेटमेंट आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे विल गिव यू सर्टन स्टेटमेंट ऊपर लिख दें क्रिटिकली एग्जामिन सो यू शुड नो हाउ टू डू दैट एग्जामिनेशन एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ एस ठीक है तो ये थोड़ा थोड़ा एनालिसिस भी करते हुए चलेंगे कि या क्या ये डेफिनेशन कब यूज कर सकते हैं वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस एंड दिस इज हाउ वी कैन गो फॉरवर्ड कि हाँ दीज आर द बेचेस आइडियाज ये आपको मिल जाएगा साइंटिफिक रेवोल्यूशन कौन कौन सा था तो आपको कुछ नहीं करना है शांति से बस देखते जाओ पढ़ाई करते जाओ फैक्टर्स वगैरह पूरा मतलब अच्छा खासा इसमें आई थिंक बी अराउंड फोर्टी स्लाइड्स सब कुछ कवर हो जाएगा मतलब सारे फिलोसफर्स इनफैक्ट दिस ईयर वी हैव इवन एडिड वन और टू फिलोसफर्स विच वर नॉट देयर लास्ट ईयर ओके okay, तो वो हमने पिछली बार नहीं किए थे लाइक द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मोन्टेस्क्यू वोल्टेयर इसको भी बहुत डिटेल में हमने कर दिया कि इन केस नेक्स्ट ईयर यूपीएससी कोई एक क्वेश्चन आपको दे दे कि इनोवेशन के नाम पे आज चलो ये 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 ले लो मेरी तरफ से गिफ्ट दिस इज मोर देन इनफ फॉर योर एग्जाम एक थीम के ऊपर कितना टाइम हमने इन्वेस्ट करना है ये हमें देखना है एंड ऑल ऑफ यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डू वन वेरी बेसिक थिंग आपके जो भी पुराने नोट्स हैं Evaluate them very clearly at this point of time itself. अगर वो काम के लगते हैं तो उसको पढ़ो नहीं लगते तो उसको फेंक दो बिकॉज दिस इज गोइंग टू बिकम वेरी हैवी बाई थर्ड क्लास यूल से सर इनमें से इंपॉर्टेंट कौन सा है ठीक है इधर यू कीप दैम कंप्लीटली आपको लगता है नहीं इस अगर दूसरा चीज आपने और अच्छे से कहीं से किया हुआ है आई एम नॉट से आई एम नॉट अगेंस्ट इट आप ये देख लीजिए अभी के अभी इज इट इंपॉर्टेंट और रेलिवेंट इनफ See the previous year question and on the basis of that decide right now. It should not be that you have two sets of note, एक पुराना और एक नया अब दोनों लेके बैठे हुए रोज की रोज फिर मेरे से पूछा सर आपके वाला करें क्या It hurts. <laughs> तो मेरे से बिना पूछे जो करना है कर लो दोनों में से But what I am teaching you it's completely relevant. जो भी आपको problem आती है किसी भी topic में पूछ लो उसको वहीं के वहीं finish करेंगे But along with this also try to understand this is not a foundation class. so your and my time is limited that we can give to this you have to be very very uh, understanding about it that aapko mains pass karna hai acche marks se and that's why next two and a half month aapko mains bhi acche se karna hai if you have some fundamental problem in prelims to prelims mein bhi mehnat karni chalu shuru karni hai sath sath mein to optional ko we can only give a certain amount of time and that within that time you have to produce results ऐसा नहीं है कि भाई मेरे साथ साथ पढ़ते पढ़ते मजा आने लग गया तीन महीने सब छोड़ छाड़ के हिस्ट्री पढ़ ली सर मजा आ गया अब बाकी बताओ क्या करना है अटैम्प छोड़ दे ये वाला नेक्स्ट डे ये नहीं क्लियर नेक्स्ट ईयर इट एक साल बहुत होता है ये राजेंद्र नगर की जो गलियां है है ना ये परेशान कर देती है वही दुकान वही दुनिया रोज की रोज मतलब क्या सुने किस कौन सी आइडियोलॉजी इट्स टू मच मेक योर लाइफ ईजी फॉर योर सेल्फ जो नोट्स मैं हमारे साथ आपको मिल रहे हैं पी पी टीज आपको साथ में अपलोड होकर मिल जाएंगी उनको अपना सेव करके रख लेना अपने पास ठीक है उसमें से भी अगर आपको लगे कुछ चीज़ काम की नहीं है आपको सबको पता है आजकल पचास टूल्स आ गए अपने हिसाब से उसको डिलीट करते चले जाना 
डोंट मेक इट अ बर्डन फॉर योर सेल्फ एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम जैसे मैंने आपको फर्स्ट पीपीडी में पूरा बता दिया लास्ट में दिस इज एन ओवर क्वेश्चन यहाँ से डायरेक्ट आने के चांसेस सिर्फ एक सेवन ईयर वॉर पे हैं बाकी पे डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन नहीं आने वाला सो मेक श्योर कि आप इस चीज को पहले ही लेके चले सॉल्व पी वाई की राइट नाउ एवरी डे यू के नॉट राइट टेन आंसर इम्पॉसिबल इट्स नेक्स्ट टू इम्पॉसिबल ओनली राइट पी वाई की फ्रॉम इम्पॉर्टेंट थीम्स हार हार्डवर्क शुड भी जस्टिफाइड एंड इट शुड ऑल्सो हैव सर्टन बेनिफिट तो जैसे एनलाइटनमेंट पे अगर कोई एक आंसर लिखना चाहते हो यू कैन राइट इट डाउन आप मुझे दिखा सकते हो क्लास के बाद में ठीक है आई बी ओपन टू गिविंग यू रिव्यूज अलॉन्ग विद पीरियड ऑफ टाइम और तीन चार महीने में अच्छा खासा इंप्रूवमेंट हो जाएगा ये मेरी तरफ से आपको बट तीन चार महीने में मेरे पास कोई मैजिक इवेंट नहीं है कि आज आए और कल चलो ठीक है ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो गया ऐसे नहीं होगा यू हैव टू डू यू योर ऑन थिंग्स घर से लिख के लेके आओ जेनुन डाउट्स पूछो देखो मुझे भी डाउट से पता चल जाता क्या आता है इसको कोई मुझसे पूछा सर आंसर राइटिंग करनी चाहिए क्या तो मेरा मन करता है अच्छा कम कम अभी तक कम ईयर खराब हुए हैं शायद <laughs> अगर कोई पूछता है कि भाई मेरे को इस स्पेसिफिक कीवर्ड्स नहीं समझ आता क्रिटिकली एग्जामिन और एग्जामिन में क्या आंसर चेंज करो आई रिस्पेक्ट देयर क्वेश्चन हाँ ठीक है किसी टॉपिक पे कंटेंट नहीं है आई डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन आई रिस्पेक्ट देयर क्वेश्चन बट ऐसे अननेसेसरी डाउट्स मत लेके आओ ना कि मतलब उनका कोई सेंस नहीं बनता है क्रिएट ए गुड रैप ऑफ फॉर योर ताकि मेरा भी मन करे हेल्प करने का वो आपको खुद से बनाना पड़ेगा एंड जितना हो सकता है बी रेगुलर इन द क्लासेस और अपना टाइम पे काम फिनिश करो हैप्पी दशहरा इन एडवांस ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ को सेकंड क्लास से स्टार्ट करेंगे यहीं से टेक ऑफ करेंगे एक आधि क्लास को ज़्यादा हो जाएगी तो परेशान नहीं होना है मेरे को ज़्यादा क्लास कर दी वो सब हमने शेड्यूल में तो मैंने बना के दिया था इतना इतना हो जाएगा बट आई न्यू फर्स्ट क्लास में थोड़ा सा बातचीत करना भी जरूरी बिकॉज आई डो नॉट नो मेजोरिटी ऑफ यू थोड़ा बात भी कर लिया आज इसलिए बट आई होप यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द अप्रोच द अप्रोच इज़ वेरी क्लियर पहले कंसेप्ट ठीक करेंगे अलॉन्ग विद कंसेप्ट वील ऑल्सो इंश्योर कंटेंट इज टू द पॉइंट एंड थर्ड पॉइंट इज इन योर हैंड राइटिंग आंसर्स बस इतना कर लीजिए इतना सिंप्लीफाइड आप लोगों के लिए और ये बस रेगुलरली कर लीजिए और एक साथ में ये और देखना है कि जो भी हम क्लास में पढ़ रहे हैं और आपके जो नोट्स हैं अगर वो काम के हैं तो अभी अभी रियलाइज कर लीजिए इट हैपन्स विद लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल रिलैप्स में जाते हैं वो उल्टा सब ये पढ़ पुढ़ के बाकी कहते हैं मेरे पास तो पुराने नोट्स भी हैं अब उनका क्या करें तो नोट्स में अगर कुछ काम का है तो अभी देख लो नहीं है तो उनको जला दो आ रही है दिवाली दशहरा <laughs> खत्म करो कहानी अभी के अभी तो इसको अभी अभी कर लेना रिजोल्व बहुत लोग आते हैं देखो पीटी के बाद सर मेरे पास ये नोट्स भी हैं और आपने ये नोट्स भी दे दिए ये भी है ये भी है मैं कह यार अब तो प्रॉब्लम जो है उसको आपको ही सॉल्व करना पड़ेगा अगर आपको आता है तो उसको मत पढ़ो सीधा आंसर लिख लो ठीक है और अगर नहीं आता तो चुपचाप पढ़ाई कर लो इनसे तो ये आप क्लास वाइज पूछ सकते हो टॉपिक वाइज पूछ सकते हो आई टेल यू बट ये लेके मत आना सर मेरे नोट्स रिव्यू कर दो ये अच्छे हैं बुरे हैं <laughs> ये सब भी रिक्वेस्ट आती है कई बार <laughs> कहने का बहुत अच्छा है मेरे लिए <laughs> मैं नोट्स रिव्यू करने रहूँगा तुम लोगों के लिए आप खुद से देख लीजिए जितना काम का उतना कर लेना देखो इस प्रॉब्लम में मत फंसना दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी लीथल नेक्स्ट ईयर और मेंस के टाइम आपको सिर्फ आंसर राइटिंग पे ध्यान देना है उस टाइम पे ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि आप लोग बैठ के ये परेशान हो रहे कि ये पढ़ूं कि ये पढ़ूं खत्म ही नहीं होते और मिनिमाइज करना है कंटेंट को अगर शॉर्ट नोट्स बनाने का मन भी करे तो शॉर्ट नोट शुड लिमिट योर सेल्फ टू द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ आंसर राइटिंग Like suppose if I have to write an answer on enlightenment, or मुझे short note बनाना है, तो I'll remember one definition. I'll remember two quotes because they can be used interchangeably. I'll remember the keywords which can come within the enlightenment. और अगर theme wise कुछ ideas का एक box है तो वो कर लिया. बाकी Emmanuel Kant और Rousseau, because UPSC is not breaching this. वो उसकी लक्ष्मण रेखा है. तो आपके भी short notes expensive नहीं होने चाहिए. कि दुनिया की सारी बुक के एनलाइटनमेंट निकाल के हमने बना देना आज कभी एक आधा क्वेश्चन कोई पी वाई क्यू में आ भी जाता है ना जो टेढ़ा मेढ़ा होता है उसको उतना ही करो जितना आंसर लिखने के टाइम जरूरत है डोंट गो बियॉन्ड दैट टाइम इज वेरी लिमिटेड ये अक्टूबर ऐसे ही निकल जाएगा ना ये फेस्टिवल सीजन है अगला एक महीना पूरा ऐसे ही है मतलब होश खुलेंगे तब तक बीस नवम्बर आ चुका होगा तो इसलिए ये बहुत जरूरी टाइम है इसमें हम थोड़ी ज़्यादा क्लासेस भी करेंगे क्योंकि अभी आपकी जैसे वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री फिनिश हो गया जैसे आपका अगला स्टार्ट हो जाएगा मैप भी बिल्कुल साथ में चलेगा आई थिंक बाय 28 एट और ट्वेंटी आपका वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री लगभग खत्म हो जाएगा 29 या 30 तक एट मैक्स 
फर्स्ट से फिर आपकी मैथ की क्लास चालू है लगातार तो ये स्टार्टिंग के कुछ जो आपका फेज है लगातार दस बारह क्लास होंगी फिर थोड़ा ब्रेक दे देंगे आपको कि आप अपना थोड़ा ब्रेक ले लीजिए फिर एंशियन इंडिया थोड़ा रुक के करेंगे क्योंकि अगर आप टेस्ट नहीं देंगे तो ये पूरी इन्फॉर्मेशन जीरो हो जानी है और ये आपको अभी ही सोच के रखना है कि कैसे मेंस में अच्छा एक्सेल करना है और इस चीज़ को पूरा सीरियसनेस के साथ करिए इट शुड नॉट हैपन इन दी एंड कि हम लोग बस सोचते रह गए अच्छा अच्छा एडमिशन ले लिया अब तो हो जाएगा शायद सब कुछ करना आप लोगों ने ही है माई गाइडेंस विल बी ऑफ वैल्यू ऑफ ओनली फाइव परसेंट आप खुद के हैं ठीक है मेरे एक बहुत अच्छे फ्रेंड है इस से अपना राम तो खुद ही बनना पड़ेगा नो बडी इज गोइंग टू गिव यू एनलाइटनमेंट इट इज गोइंग टू बी डन थ्रू योर ओन वनवास तो वनवास चालू हो चुका है ठीक है डू योर लेवल बेस्ट एंड दिस इज हाउ इट शुड बी ठीक है सो आई होप समझ में आई चीज है पी वाई की उसकी बुकलेट हम आपको दिला अभी है अवेलेबल है तो मैं अभी दिला देता हूँ तो ऑनलाइन भी अपलोड कर देंगे ठीक है तो आप उस चीज को देखना शुरू कर दीजिए इसमें ट्वेंटी थ्री का अभी तक पेपर ऐड नहीं हुआ ट्वेंटी थ्री का पेपर आप अपने पास आई थिंक एक एक पेपर रख लेना क्या क्या क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी थ्री में आए हैं एंड मेक श्योर कि हम सारा कवर कर ले पी वाई की देखो फर्स्ट लिटमस टेस्ट है वो करना ही करना है उसके साथ में जो इंपॉर्टेंट थीम्स जो मैंने आपको आज समझाई वो भी हम हंड्रेड करेंगे और एक चीज को बहुत फोकस करके चलना है कि आंसर राइटिंग के लिए कितना इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यू है ना अपने पास वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री के अभी है ना एक बार देख लो इन सबको दे देखे ठीक है ठीक है दैट्स इट फॉर टुडे कोई और क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर साइड कुछ रह गया यस yes. हाँ देखो मेरा प्रोसेस बहुत सही है कि जो भी हम शॉर्ट नोट बनाए ना वो सिर्फ पी वाई क्यू के आस पास से बनाओ उससे ज्यादा एक्सेस मत बनाओ कोई प्रोबेबल क्वेश्चन आएगा तो मैं आपको पहले बता दूंगी इसको और ध्यान दे लेना तो उसको पह, तो पहले लेवल पे लिमिट करना कई बार लोग ना वो शॉर्ट नोट बोलते हो शॉर्ट नोट होते नहीं है वो पूरा ही हैंड आउट उतार देते <laughs> तो वो चीज का एक थोड़ा ध्यान रखना कि वो मिनिमम होना चाहिए लाइक सपोज इफ इज एनलाइटमेंट टॉपिक वी शुड नॉट हैव मोर देन टू पेजेस ऑफ शॉर्ट नोट एंड इफ यू हैव टू पेजेस ऑफ शॉर्ट नोट रिविजन में देखो बिल्कुल दिक्कत नहीं आएगी आपने दस पेज का रखा होगा एनलाइटनमेंट का शॉर्ट नोट वो कैसे कैसे उसको रिविजन कर पाओगे तो और वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री का थोड़ा ये दिक्कत भी आएगा कि वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री आपको प्रेलिम्स में काम आएगा नहीं तो आपको अभी पढ़ के क्लोज करना पड़ेगा उसको मतलब विद इन ट्वेंटी डेज जैसे हमने क्लासेस खत्म करी टेक टेन मोर डेज बट फिनिश इट ऑफ तो इसमें तो ये दिक्क, ये दिक्कत थोड़ा ज्यादा रहता है वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री में बिकॉज ये आता नहीं है लेकिन आगे वाले में मेरे ख्याल से एंशियंट इंडिया मिडेवल मॉडर्न में तो दिक्कत वैसे भी नहीं आएगा आप बस मिनिमम करते चलो उसको ठीक है और पी वाई की उसको सॉल्व करते चलो जैसे बुकलेट मिल जाएगा आपको सारे पी वाई कुछ कुछ को वही सॉल्व कर लो एक आपको सिखाऊंगा नेक्स्ट क्लास में ब्रेन स्टॉमिंग हाउ टू डू ब्रेन स्टॉमिंग बिकॉज ऑन एवरी क्वेश्चन वी कैनोट राइट आंसर पता नहीं कितने क्वेश्चन होंगे और कुछ क्वेश्चन सेम कैटेगरी के होते हैं तो हम दोनों को मस्ती के लिए आंसर लिखने लग जाते हैं कि थोड़ा सा चेंज होगा फिर से आंसर लिख देता हूँ ऐसे नहीं बात बनेगी भाई हमें बहुत ही लिमिटेड होके बेस्ट आउटकम निकालना है और उसको करने के लिए आपको बस उन्हीं चीज़ों पर एक्स्ट्रा फोकस करना है जो कि आपके काम की है ऐसे मैं लाइटन में आपको एग्जैक्टली exactly बताता चलूंगा इतना कर लो ठीक है आज की तो क्लास बस ओवरव्यू में थी तो अभी तक हम आए नहीं जो कि पूरा एप्लीकेशन पार्ट अभी आने वाला है बट आई टेल यू कि इसमें इतना डिटेल काम का है इसमें ये हिस्टोरोग्राफी काम की इसमें इतना एनालिसिस काम का है बस लिमिट योर हम भी देखो हैंड आउट देने को ना 25 25 पेज का एनलाइटनमेंट का दे सकते हैं उनको बहुत मुश्किल नहीं है बट हमने इसको पहले ही छह सात पेज में लिमिट कर दिया इतना याद कर लो अगर और कुछ नहीं है तो इतना कर लो वेट कवर्स मेजोरिटी ऑफ द थीम्स जैसे आपका एक टॉपिक है स्प्रेड ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट उस पर कभी क्वेश्चन नहीं आया डायरेक्टली क्या पता नेक्स्ट ईयर आ जाए हमें नहीं पता ना तो इसलिए हमने उसको जैसे आपका टॉपिक कवर कर दिया वाला ठीक है ना जैसे आप फर्स्ट आप एक बार देख लीजिए एक बार पढ़ के आना नेक्स्ट ईयर क्लास में ताकि आपको ईजी लगे ये सब कुछ आइडियाज ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट क्लास में डिस्कस करेंगे फैक्टर्स ईजी है इम्पैक्ट क्या था किस किस एरियाज में एनलाइटन डेस्पोटिज्म दिया हुआ है स्प्रेड ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट इन कॉलोनीज इसको डबल टेक कर लेना बिकॉज दिस इज अ टॉपिक विच कैन कम लिमिटेड है तो नेक्स्ट क्लास में ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ तक करा के रखना ठीक है ऑनलाइन अपलोड कर देना ताकि सब कर सके ठीक है तो उसमें है देन कांत को कवर किया हुआ है हमने रूसो कवर किया हुआ है बहुत ही लिमिटेड है देखो 
एक लेवल के शॉर्ट नोट्स तो यही हो गए अब आप ये नहीं कहेंगे कि ये इसको रिवाइज करने में दिक्कत होने वाली है आपका एक क्वेश्चन पक्का इसके अंदर से है इसी के अंदर से है ठीक है इसमें से भी अगर आपको शॉर्ट नोट बनाना हो तो बस उसी का बनाना जहां से क्वेश्चन आने की प्रोबेबिलिटी हो या वो थोड़ा सा इससे डिफरेंट हो डोंट वेस्ट योर टाइम एक सपोज इफ ए क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट स्प्रेड ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट उसमें एक पेज में लिखा हो उसको आपने फिर से एक पेज में लिख दिया काहे का शॉर्ट नोट था कोई सेंस नहीं बनी उस चीज की लेकिन अगर मैं आपको पी वाई क्यूज बताऊंगा एक दो क्वेश्चन है जो इसमें डायरेक्टली कवर्ड नहीं किए हमने उसको आप बना सकते हो तो आपका आठ दस पेज का होगा ना तो रिवीजन करना मुझे नहीं लगता दिक्कत होगी पीटी के बाद और ये आपका लेकिन हर टॉपिक पे होना चाहिए बहुत बार क्या होता है ना जैसे हम स्टार्ट करते हैं सिलेबस स्टार्टिंग के थर्टी पार्ट तक पहुंच गए उसके बाद रुक गए और थर्टी के बाद ना वो फिर ब्रेक ही लग जाते हैं तब तक हमें लगता है एक महीना जा चुका है अब कुछ और कर लेते हैं और जैसे कुछ और करते हैं फिर वो खत्म फिर वो जीरो तो वैसा तो होगा नहीं क्लास के साथ में सारा कवर हो जाएगा आपका स्ट्रेटेजिक तरीके से आपको जहां जिस टॉपिक में एक्स्ट्रा डाउट है देखो नेचुरली मुझे कुछ टॉपिक्स छोड़ने पड़ेंगे जो मुझे लगा कि भाई चलो ठीक है कि ये इतना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है फिर ये काफी इजी लेवल का आप संभाल लोगे उसको अगर आपको उसमें भी डाउट हो तो आप क्वेश्चन के थ्रू पूछ लेना कि मुझे ये वाले में ये दिक्कत है या फिर कोई एक्स्ट्रा हैंड आउट होगा तो हम फाउंडेशन का भी आपको एक एक्स्ट्रा हैंड आउट दे देंगे ऐसा कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है अगर आपके पास नोट्स नहीं होंगे तो ठीक है बट आई हैव टू ऑल्सो यूज द टाइम जुडिशियसली अगर हम वैसे नहीं करेंगे तो फिर तो देखो वही 25 क्लास हो जाएंगे और 25 क्लास में तो फाउंडेशन हो जाता है और हमें करना है वही सेम चीज़ 6 से 7 क्लास के अंदर अगर हम ठीक से इसको देखें तो तो मेरा यही ऑब्जेक्टिव है कि आप उन एरियाज पे ज़्यादा टारगेट करिए जहाँ से आपके मार्क्स बढ़ें आप आंसर राइटिंग पर बहुत फोकस करिए आप खुद से एक दो आंसर लिख के लेके आइए ठीक है कोशिश करिए टाइम को थोड़ा सा ढंग से दे यूज़ करना है कि मतलब अगर एक बी ट्वेंटी मार्कर क्वेश्चन है तो फोर्टीन मिनट से एक टाइम रख लीजिए कि इसके अंदर मुझे लिखना है अभी अगर अठारह मिनट भी लग रहे हैं कोई बात नहीं तीन महीने के अंदर हम चौदह मिनट तक आ जाएंगे टेन मार्कर है टेक सिक्स टू सेवन मिनट्स बस यही है वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री में तो पंद्रह नंबर का तो क्वेश्चन ही नहीं आता टेन या फिर ट्वेंटी ये करना सीख लीजिए थोड़ा सा इनोवेशन जरूर सीख लीजिए डायग्राम मैप बनाना दीज आर द स्किल्स विच गिव यू फाइव टू टेन मार्क्स एक्स्ट्रा पांच नंबर तो पर पेपर हंड्रेड परसेंट दे देंगे अगर आप ठीक से कर पाएंगे ठीक है तो दिस इज समथिंग विच यू शुड थिंक अबाउट स्किल्स बहुत जरूरी है ये चीज जान लो कंटेंट सिर्फ एक लेवल तक हेल्प करता है फिर आती है आपकी आंसर राइटिंग और विद इन आंसर राइटिंग देर लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स टू बी डन लाइक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ वेरियस कैटेगरीज ऑफ डायरेक्टिव कि अगर एक्सप्लेन आएगा तो क्या करना है लाइक सपोज आई गिव यू बेसिक लेवल क्वेश्चन Napoleon used to say, "Had there been no Russia, there would have been no revolution." If I use the word "justify" or the directive becomes "justify," do you have to write anything against the statement? नहीं लिखना आपने उसको justify करना है. But if I say critically examine, तो answer change हो जाएगा. If I say explain, तो Napoleon के emotion भी बताने पड़ेंगे कि his own rise was also linked to French Revolution, and since those ideas were belonging to Rousseau, that's why that emotion can be seen sense in his. Conclusion over the role of Rousseau. So, as per directives, your answer structure is going to vary. Okay, historiography slash contemporary comments. Like, if any question comes on Rousseau, Napoleon's comment should come. 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 ठीक है सिर्फ ये नहीं है रूसो के ऊपर लाइक वोल्टेयर के ऊपर है कि वोल्टेयर हार्ड ने द हॉर्सेज ऑफ रीजन एंड रूसो अनचेंड द टाइगर ऑफ इमोशंस दैट्स अ वेरी फेमस लाइन सिमिलरली वी हैव द थियोरी ऑफ सोशल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच स्टार्ट्स व्हेन मैन वाज बोर्न फ्री ही इज एवरीवेयर इन चेंज ये सारी कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी कमेंट्स हैं और जब भी एक के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आता है ये सारी लाइन से आपके आंसर के अंदर आनी चाहिए बट द वे यू हैव टू राइट योर आंसर शुड जस्टिफाई द यूज ऑफ दोज कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी कमेंट ऐसा नहीं कि आंसर लिख के वन टू थ्री फोर अब आंसर लिखते हैं ऐसे नहीं करना है तो ये आपका चैलेंज है आपके सामने देन यूज ऑफ डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ विजुअल चाहे वो डायग्राम हो मैप हो चार्ट हो वो सारा आप कैसे यूटिलाइज करोगे वो भी आपके लिए चैलेंज है तो आपको इन चीजों के ऊपर बहुत ध्यान देना है मेजोरिटी ऑफ द टाइम वट है वी आर ओनली कंफ्यूज अबाउट दिस हम यहीं तक हैं अभी हम यहाँ गए ही नहीं है ढंग से और ये सारी चीज़ आपको एक साथ करनी है तो अगर शॉर्ट नोट्स बनाने का मन करे ना तो मेरी तरफ से देखो तुम्हें यही है इन दो चीज़ों पे जरूर फोकस करना वन वन पेजर नोट्स बन सकते बड़े आसानी से कि एनलाइटनमेंट पे व्हाट आर द इम्पोर्टेंट कंटेम्प्रेरी कमेंट और हिस्टोरीग्राफी और वट आर द इम्पोर्टेंट विजुअल्स
तो अगर करना है तो ये वन पेजर कर सकते हो बिकॉज बाकी तो आपको हैंड आउट में मिल जाएंगे पी वाई के सॉल्व करेंगे या फिर क्लास में कुछ एडिशनल कभी डिक्टेशन होगा नोट्स होंगे उसमें बन जाएगा ये आपका मेन मेहनत है एंड दिस शुड ऑल्सो कवर द पोर्शन ऑफ पी वाई क्यूज कि अगर पी वाई क्यू में जैसे मान लो अगर अमेरिकन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हम पढ़ रहे हैं एंड इफ देर इज अ परस्पेक्टिव गिवन बाई चार्ल्स बियर्ड इफ ए परस्पेक्टिव गिवन बाई फॉरेस्ट मैकडोनल्ड तो हमें वो वहाँ पर पता होना चाहिए कि फिर क्वेश्चन कम्स ऑन अमेरिकन सिविल वॉर तो चार्ल्स बियर्ड्स आते हैं इट वॉज स्लेवरी विच लेड टू द सिविल वॉर बट देर थ्री फोर अदर हिस्टोरियंस विच से इट वॉज ओनली अ सर्फेस इशू द अदर इशू वॉज द प्रॉब्लम्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इकोनॉमी द प्रॉब्लम्स विच वर क्रिएटेड बाय द डिविजन बिटवीन द रिपब्लिकन्स एंड द डेमोक्रेट्स सो ये जो परस्पेक्टिव है एनालिसिस जो है इसके शॉर्ट नोट्स होंगे ना तो बहुत फायदा होगा लाइक इफ ए क्वेश्चन इज देर हु वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर जहां पे लाइंस हमें याद नहीं आती लेकिन अगर मान लो ऐसा क्वेश्चन आता है व्हाट वर द फैक्टर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर कोई भी लिख लेगा इसमें कोई चैलेंज ही नहीं है बट इफ से डू यू थिंक जर्मनी वाज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर बस हो गया काम खत्म दो दो पॉइंट तक जर्मनी था तीसरे का मेरी ही गलती <laughs> कि मैंने पढ़ लिया मैंने हिस्ट्री ले लिया ये नहीं होना चाहिए हमें एनालिसिस पे नोट्स चाहिए वो सबसे मेन काम है आप लोगों के शॉर्ट नोट्स का जो भी अगर पॉइंट्स हो उसमें सिर्फ वर्ड भी लिखोगे इंडिकेटिव आप लिख लोगे पॉइंट्स बिलीव मी मेरा रिवीजन प्रोसेस अगर आप सीख आप फॉलो करना चाहते हो तो कर सकते हो मेरा रिवीजन प्रोसेस ऐसा था जो मुझे आता था मैं उसको रिवाइज ही नहीं करता था मेरा हमेशा मेजर फोकस उस चीज़ पर था जो मुझे नहीं आता है इनिशियली एग्जाम से पहले तो आप एक दो बार पूरा सिलेबस रिवाइज करोगे ही करोगे बट अगर आपको क्विक रिविजन करना सीखना है ना तो फोकस ऑन दोज एरिया वेर यू आर वीक एंड दैट्स वाई टॉपिक वाई यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई वेयर यू आर वीक लाइक इफ क्वेश्चन कम्स कि साइंटिफिक रेवल्यूशन वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एनलाइटनमेंट शायद आप वीक हो गए इसमें अगर होगा वट आर द आइडियाज ऑफ एनलाइटनमेंट मुझे नहीं लगता इसमें किसी को दिक्कत आनी चाहिए पोलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक सोशल कल्चर एक बार पढ़ लिया काम खत्म तो इस टॉपिक को बार बार रिवाइज करके इस टाइम पे कोई भी फायदा नहीं है बिकॉज आपका एग्जाम एक साल बाद है लेकिन हाँ जिन जिन एरिया में आप वीक हो कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी कमेंट्स बार बार रिवाइज कर रहे हो दिस इज गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव योर आंसर राइटिंग तो अगर करना है शॉर्ट नोट्स बनाने हैं तो इसको ध्यान में रखना and this is something which you have to do on daily basis directives कि कैसे कैसे आंसर चेंज होते हो जाता है हर चीज को ले लेके तो ये हम ध्यान देंगे कंटेंट तो देखो क्लास के साथ कवर हो जाएगा कुछ पी वाई क्यूज भी साथ साथ में कवर हो ही जाएंगे मोस्टली सारे ही हो जाएंगे इन सब चीजों को बस थोड़ा सा आप अपने लेवल पे पूरा फोकस करिए दिस इज योर अदीना पढ़ा दिया याद आपने रखना पड़ेगा और सही टाइम पे अप्लाई करना सीखना पड़ेगा क्योंकि तो एक ही क्वेश्चन मिलेगा इलाइटनमेंट का एक ही डेफिनेशन याद कराई थी वो भी याद नहीं आई वहां पे <laughs> पहली क्लास ही फेल हो गई <laughs> मानते हो ना ये बात सच्चाई है ना जब आप यहाँ टेस्ट लिखोगे एनलाइटनमेंट में क्वेश्चन आएंगे वही डेफिनेशन तीन क्वेश्चन है तीनों में लिख देना ये मैं सोचना कि तीन क्वेश्चन है तीन नई डेफिनेशन चाहिए बिकॉज इन द फाइनल एग्जाम यू ऑनली रिक्वायर वन डेफिनेशन तो क्यों परेशान हो रहे हो एक तीनों में लिखो चाहे लाइन से तीनों क्वेश्चन हो दोबारा लिखो एनलाइटनमेंट जो ये नहीं बस रेफर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर वन रेफर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए एक ही याद करो बार बार याद करो और उसी पे ही लिमिट करो अपने आप को जनरल की तरह समझो कि भाई इस एग्जाम में चाहिए क्या इस एग्जाम में चाहिए एक लिमिटेड लेवल ऑफ इंटरेक्शन ठीक है सिलेबस को समझना सिलेबस के साथ साथ में ये जानना कि क्या क्या चीज इंपॉर्टेंट है कहाँ से यूपीएससी बार बार क्वेश्चन पूछता है ये सारा ही अपना सर्कल ऑफ वर्क है वंस दिस इज डन शांत बैठो आराम से और ये चीज करते चलना मैं ये नहीं चाहता कि आप लोग फैब में आके ये सोचें कि यार क्या हो गया अपन ने पढ़ तो लिया लेकिन समराइज नहीं हुआ कुछ भी तो ये मोस्टली क्लासेस आपकी मंथ में जैसे एक बार ये हो जाएंगी मैप की एंशेंट की तो आप ये लगा लीजिए जैन एंड तक आपका फिनिश हो जाएगा आराम से और महीने मेरा यही एम है कि पाँच से छः क्लासेस रखो तो आपके लिए भी ईजी है ठीक है उसको जो आप पढ़ करना चाहते हो वो अचीव भी कर पाओगे अगर क्लासेस बहुत ज़्यादा करेंगे तो फिर वही वाली बात ना टेस्ट हो पाते टाइम पर ना आपको बर्डन हो जाता है हर छोटी छोटी चीज़ को लेकर तो इतना कम से कम कर लेते हैं अच्छे से एंड आई थिंक दैट वुड सफाइस फॉर द एग्जाम ठीक है बाकी नेक्स्ट ईयर जब पेपर आएगा तब करेंगे प्रोडिक्शन भी कौन से क्वेश्चन आ सकते हैं नहीं आ सकते हैं वो चीज़ भी हेल्प कर देगी अपने को ठीक है